now the morning kids are getting ready for school. The new year has officially started and a new report also out this morning showing that many of those kids are using e-cigarettes and nicotine products less and less. Yeah, so some good news there. However, officials say to keep those numbers low, it's critical to keep up enforcement of tobacco laws and educate children on the dangers of tobacco and nicotine. So joining us this morning to talk more about this report that is now out is Dr. Brian King, the director of FDA's Center for Tobacco Products. Appreciate the time this morning. Yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, thanks again. Okay, break down some of the highlights in this new report that shows this new data. Yeah, so we've got a big win for the public health of our nation's kids. Um, we saw a 25% decline in e-cigarette use among middle and high school students nationally over the past year alone, and that is the lowest level that we have seen in a decade. Um, we've also uh, monitored other tobacco products, including nicotine pouches, uh, and we saw no change within the past year, although there was a slight uptick over the past couple years, and so we're still mindful um, uh, that those products are, are an area of concern, and we got to redouble our efforts, uh, continue to implement the strategies we know work to prevent youth from using any tobacco product. Right, doctor, I know that before, you know, the pandemic hit that teen tobacco and, you know, nicotine use, these e-cigarettes was like the public health crisis. So what are some areas that we are still concerned about? Well, a comprehensive approach is, is really key here, um, given the health risks of these products. And so in terms of concerns, we know these products uh, contain nicotine, which is highly addictive. It can harm the developing adolescent brain and also prime the brain for addiction to other drugs. And so it's critical that, that youth not use these products. Um, but we also know what works to help accomplish that. And so for FDA's part over the past year, we've ramped up enforcement and compliance efforts to make sure that we're addressing the diversity of, of different factors that drive youth use including taking a lot of first-of-their-kind actions to help address bad actors in the supply chain, including those selling illegal products, whether it be retailers, manufacturers, or others. And on top of that enforcement, we're also educating the public on the health risks of these products, particularly among kids headed back into that new school year. Well, you, you kind of touched on uh, a little bit of what I wanted to ask, which is what is working here? You know, is it the messaging? Is it getting the message out there? Is it education? Is it the enforcement of rules? I mean, what has been the biggest factor in seeing these numbers take, take a dip? So it's multiple factors. We know um, comprehensive is key when it comes to tobacco product regulation. Um, we've got some new products, um, but it, it may be new products, but it's the same addiction risk. Um, and it's also the same strategies that we know work. So in addition to that enforcement and compliance that I mentioned, we also know that education is key. And so for FDA's part, we continue to have broad scale population campaigns and we reach kids where they're at. And right now that's particularly important in social media, mm. gaming and streaming services. And so we continue to educate kids but also youth influencers as well like educators and parents to make sure they're aware of the risks and importantly know what to do um, if youth are using these products. That makes sense. And what work is still left to do? You know it's not over until it's over so what do you guys have you know plan moving forward? So we're going to continue the enforcement and compliance approach. We know that there's still 1.6 million kids that are using these products. And so, you know, prevention is key with these policies. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. But we've also got to help these kids who are using these products to quit. And so we continue to work to educate um, uh, parents, also educators, to make sure they've got those resources um, about preventing kids, but also helping um, them quit. And so if you're looking for more information, we've got materials at um, fda.gov slash tobacco and also smokefree.gov um, for important materials to help youth quit if they do use these products currently. Nice. That's great. Well, this is great news. Again, uh, you're going to continue fighting the fight, but the fact that, it's, it, that we have some new numbers showing that there is that improvement, it's, it's great to hear. Dr. Brian King, thanks for taking the time to join us here on AM Extra this morning to talk about it. Thank you. All right, and take care. And again, if you would like to see the full results of that youth tobacco study, we do have that full report posted at coin.com as well. Well, happening this week, a celebration.